Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is Jesse, and I am back for day two of the 2022 year in review, year wrap up, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, we are back in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Kawabunga collection. We are just going to automate here. We are going to play the arcade version of uh, Turtles in Time for this video. And uh, so, yeah, you have something fun to watch in the background. <clears throat> so today, let's just jump right in. Today is all about the retro first-person shooters because, like I said, I have a retro first-person shooter playlist. Uh, I have a Doomed playlist all about Doom mods and Doom playthroughs and just any anything and everything Doom. Um, just I love the 90s era arena-style first-person shooters, and boy, howdy. Do we have a ton of these? We started this year by a little game called the Anacrusis, and I really liked what I played of this, and it really pains me that my damn HP computer died because I don't, like, I'm right on the verge of kind of being able to run it on my current rig. And, you know, it's still in early access, but, like, it's a Left 4 Dead, it's a Four-player Left 4 Dead style game, but you're playing in like a 70s cheesy science fiction setting where you're playing like on a spaceship, the Anacrusis in space, and you're fighting aliens. Uh, they have some unique uh, enemy, special and uh, special enemy styles, like the, the pain in the ass one that blinds you with this like yellow light. Um, and then you've got like, you know, you got your basic enemies and you got your specials. Um, but it, it adds just enough difference uh, from something like Left 4 Dead or Vermintide or something like that. Um, yeah, I am, when I get my new PC again here, I am excited to check back into it and just see how the game has progressed since I played it the first maybe three three months of this year. The Anacrusis was a good one. Mortal Sin, this one was kind of neat, actually. Um, it was a roguelite type of thing. It had this really interesting black and white art style. You were kind of going through these in these dungeons. There were traps and enemies, and you had like melee weapons, range weapons. There were traps, like I said. There were um, just all you never knew what you were going to find in there. There were chests. Um, it was just kind of a really bizarre. Uh, first-person shooter melee kind of game, and the, the art style made it really unique. So I really enjoyed uh, what I've played of it, and uh, I got fairly far, but I just, again, I, I don't think I've ever finished that one either, but it's uh, I think it's still in early access, if I remember correctly. Another similar game that came out around that time that I remember playing quite a bit of is... Um, Berserk Mode, this was another roguelite type of game where you were, you know, getting random weapons or whatever, and then you were going through these runs. And this was another level-based one where it kind of had a, like, a simple polygonal look to it. Um, and, yeah, it was just another fun take on it. It felt, it felt and played kind of like a retro first-person shooter. Um, but it had the whole roguelite random levels thing to it. Uh, the art style, the enemies. Um, this one, I believe, if I remember correctly, that was the one you could also have uh, different weapons in each hand. And so you kind of could mix things together. That was kind of a neat thing that that game did. Um, that was another one that I enjoyed what they've released of it so far. Um... Oh yeah, Linguist FPS. This was a fascinating type of game. I think it partially worked and partially, I don't know, partially did, partially didn't. Um, I love the idea because they basically gamify language learning. So you, essentially you go through these tutorial levels and you go through them as much as you can or as much as you want until you really learn them. You choose a language like, you know, Spanish, Japanese, whatever, and <clears throat> you learn different like types of words like colors or numbers or you know left right center or you know red blue green and 
you learn those types of things or different, you know, base and basic actions or you know, like for health items or ammo, like you could find, oh, I learned what, you know, pizza, burger, fries, shake, um, any number of different things. And then once you get through all the tutorial parts, you do these, these levels where you're kind of going through and they're giving you instructions on what you need to do to get through the level. And like I said, I love the idea, but I think they could have done, um, you'd have to watch my original video of it from this summer, but like they didn't always give you, um, exactly what the words were. Um, I, I can't think of really how to explain it. So I'm not, I'll just refer you to the earlier video. Uh, I love the attempt. I love what they were doing, but I think it maybe could have been executed a little bit better. But I love the fact that you're, you know, you're doing this language learning game, but it's not just like, oh, let's memorize a list and try to, you know, do a matching game or something, you know, your traditional, the way you would learn, you know, you're taking something fun, like shooting a dude or going through an obstacle course, you're gamifying it to be fun while you're learning this language. So, I mean, kudos, and I'm curious to see what they do with it going forward. Nightmare Reaper. This is another one that I really, really want to like. And I do. Um, it, it's a fascinating game, and I love watching people play it, because I'm bad at it, apparently. This is another uh, procedurally generated um, level-based game. You're in this asylum, and when you go to sleep, you go into these fucked up dream world lands where, like, you're fighting all kinds of enemies and stuff. Um, the problem that I really have with it is I like the core game, but the crunchy pixels and everything, and especially that I don't like the first area in the game. You're in these, um, you know, kind of cavern, cave type areas. And to me, there's a lot of flying enemies. There's a lot of people taking shots at you from a lot from a distance. And I think a lot of the enemies sort of blend together. I had a little bit of trouble seeing some of the enemies. And so I would get killed actually quite quickly. And as much as I wanted to love the game, there's just like there were th certain things that I just had trouble seeing uh, with the way the game looked like I the the. Um, the asylum, that was really easy to see. You had these white walls and, you know, everything was sort of gray. And then, like, if you had anything else, it would stand out against it. But you had these, you know, dirt rock walls or whatever. And I don't know, especially in that first area, there's just something about that first area that I really didn't super like and I had trouble seeing. So as much as I really like the game, as much as I really, I know it's a great game. I love the variety of just bizarre weapons and stuff that you can get. It's a really neat game with some great systems in it, but I just, for me personally, I had some trouble. I know I watched uh, Blind Ryan. I, I watched him play it quite a bit earlier this year. He was just, he fell hard for that game. Uh, and a lot of other people did too. And like I said, for good reason, I know it's a great game. It's just for me personally, I had a little bit of trouble with it. Um, uh, Postal Brain Damage, your Postal spinoff. Postal 4 is still in early access, and uh, I tried running that on my current rig, and holy hell, did it not run good. So I am absolutely going to wait for that game to be optimized better and wait until I get my new rig, because I do want to mess around with Postal 4. But Postal Brain Damage was more of a straight-up level-based arcade game that was just, again, over-the-top, ridiculous, stupid. You could reflect bullets back at people if you time the melee right. You had all these just really bizarre enemies. You know, you had power-ups. You had this, like, you know, again, it's postal. You could pee on things, and depending on if you got a power-up, you could basically have, like, fl flaming pee and explosions. And like I said, you've got all kinds of crazy weapons and stuff. It was just a really bizarre game. But hold on, I gotta get a drink of water real quick. Postal Brain Damage. I think that would also run really a lot better on my new, uh, or on a new PC next year. But I, I, I've got a few levels into it. And uh, I've really enjoyed what I've played. So for a 
you know, again, it's got some really, it's got some really kind of twisted dark humor and not everyone is really going to be into that game. But it, like I said, it is so over the top. It's so over the top, ridiculous and dumb and violent that like you can't take it seriously. If you do, I, I don't know what to tell you because it, it is just so stupid and over the top that you really just, you can't. Um, oh, Metal Hellsinger. This is one that just pains me because I played the demo and I played the full game. I did a video for it. And when I took my headset off after recording that video, I just heard my computer making all kinds of horrendous, just bad fan noises. And it is an awesome game. It is a rhythm first person shooter. Last year, we looked at bullets per minute, which is a first attempt at that that I really, really wanted to like. But a lot of those small ankle biter and flying enemies, and there's something about that game that, as much as I wanted to like it, I didn't. But Metal Hellsinger is what I wanted from a rhythm first-person shooter. It's like Doom 2016 meets Death Metal meets a rhythm game, and it's awesome. You've got like a melee weapons you've got your little skull gun you've got your shotgun you've got um oh there's another gun like i forget what it's like this crossbow thing i haven't even unlocked all the weapons i've only gotten to like i think there's like six levels in there and i think i've gotten to like level three um <clears throat> but like no when i get my new computer i am absolutely going to be playing this game again because the way that the soundtrack syncs to what you're doing or what you sync to the soundtrack like not only like shooting reloading dodging jumping when you're in the groove and you're just like you're running around you're turning around you're shooting dudes you're doing these glory kills and everything is to the beat and you've like you have this you know death metal growling kind of thing but then it goes into like the, there's uh like the second level has this lady who when you go to the chorus she's like actually you know singing really nicely and it's super catchy. Like, it is just, like, yeah, This it's like this game was made for me. Um, it It's so good. And it pains me that I can't play it on my current rig because it just is not happy about it. And I could play it on my Steam Deck, except I just cannot see playing that game on an analog stick. That is a game where it is challenging, and it will punish you. Um, and so I, I'm going to have to wait to, until I get a new PC because actually I did try it on my steam deck once and I said it was neat, but just no, the, I, I cannot play that game with an analog stick. I need fluid keyboard and mouse is what that game demands. So metal hell singer, I will, I promise I will be back for you because you're amazing. And when I get a computer that can play you correctly, I will definitely play that again. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Forgive me, father. This was another really f kind of a fun surprise. There's a lot of games that kind of focus around like cults and stuff like that this year. Um, but this one, like you're this preacher dude and you're fighting these <clears throat> like cultist guys and then they're, you know, they're monsters and it's just a really, <clears throat> it's a really interesting game. Um, kind of had this like a comic book art style to it. I really like the unique, it's really crunchy, old school, 90s pixel, um, first person shooter. And it feels good to play. And it's actually really hard. <laughs> but um, yeah, forgive me, father, that full, that game fully came out this summer. And it's one that I definitely need to put some more time into because I got pretty far in and then I just started getting my ass kicked. So I got distracted by other things. Um, Agent 64 demo. I'm going to be talking about a lot of demos just because of things like Steam Next, Next Fest and uh, Realms Deep. There were a lot of really cool um, demos that were being showcased this summer and early fall. Agent 64, if you liked Goldeneye, if you like Perfect Dark on the N64, the, this is a game you're going to want to keep an eye on because <clears throat> it literally feels just like you were... Going back to those types of games, even to the point where I was playing it with a keyboard and mouse, and I commented on this in the video where 
the way that your auto aim and it would like you would move it, it had this special aiming mode where you had to like hold down a button and move a crosshair. And I wish that it had a more like when you especially when you're playing with a keyboard and mouse, I wish that it had a more PC centric aiming scheme because it just felt a little bit awkward and you really had to just it was easier just to trust the auto aim than it was to try to be precise, at least it was for me. <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me. Um but yeah, uh Agent 64, I really hope that comes out next year because what I've played I, there has been two demos of it so far and I enjoyed both a lot. So I really I really want that game to be good. Oh, Salako, the Salako demo. Man, I when I saw that game unveiled at like was it 2 years ago at Realms Deep, I was like there's no way in hell this is in the GZ Doom engine. It's like fear in the Doom engine, and it works. Like the the way all the mechanics, the destruction, the slow. -mo, I mean, like actually, no. There's no, it's not really slow mo, but they're like the the you know the the gore, the AI, the um the environments, the just man, the weapons. You have the ta the soldiers that like talk to each other, just like they did in Fear. Um, it's just such a really, really cool game and it is tough. <laughs> I, you know, playing the demo, I got my butt kicked and, uh, as I'm recording this, there's going to be an updated version of that demo hitting steam, I think within like the next week or two. So I'm very curious to check that out, but I am a hundred percent on board and looking forward to seeing what the final game of Salako is, because again, what these guys are doing with the doom engine is i i don't i don't get it i don't know it's insane and it's cool it's great um but yeah fear meets doom sign me up um and, oh anger foot there's been a couple of demos of that and they had an updated demo of this that was way more polished this summer i am very much looking forward to that game next year because it is a first-person shooter where it's a lot focused on game or on uh, melee, and you you kick people, you kick them into doors, you kick them into other objects or other people. You can pick up a gun and like you use it, you'll you use it until the ammo runs out, and then you chuck it at them to stun them, and then you you know you just it's really it's got this really driving just do, 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 this really driving thumping beat that is super aggressive, but it's just fun. Yeah, Angerfoot is ridiculous and over-the-top in the best way possible, and I am all for it. Looking forward to that next year, based on the couple demos so far. Um, Incision. I don't remember the specifics of this one, but I remember it, and I, I remember playing it, and I know I liked it. Um, I remember just seeing this in a list. I remember Incision. That was a fun one. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what the final version of that is going to be. It was another retro first-person shooter. One that I didn't write down. Um, I know there's been a couple that... I know there's going to be a couple that I missed because there are just literally so many. Um, but... Um, oh, I just went stupid. I, I remember the... Uh, I had it a second ago. I did a stream of it too, the um, the 1920s, 1930s gangster one, where it's all cell shaded and comic book style. Love the Fallen Aces, Fallen Aces. That game is, mm, I really want to play that game too. Fallen Aces looks incredible. Um, but there's another one that I was trying to think of, Incision. Um. If I if I think of it later, <clears throat> I'll mention it. Um, but I can't remember because there was I know there was another one that I missed writing down here, but that I remember thinking, yeah, I got to keep an eye on that. Fashion Police Squad. I did a video for the demo, and I do have a video for the full game coming out because it did come out, and this is a really bizarre and a really neat take on the retro first-person shooter. Um, 
it's all about you, you know you're using you have your like your shotgun your machine gun style weaponry but it's 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 like non-violent in a way because you're you're fighting fashion crimes and so like you you're using like the shotgun is to blast people with color you have a like a sewing machine gun to fix other people's cr- uh, fashion crimes you have a like a, a laser leech gun that will like suck out like you know people that are dressed too loudly you know that are just you know you're like hey you're way over the top you're trim down your style a little bit here um and you have this ridiculous announcer as you're going all of your characters you have like these ben stein style business suit guys it's just you know you got these these karens um it's really it shouldn't work as well as it does but it does work and I love the fact, like, it's something completely off the wall. It's not a space marine. It's not zombies. It's not, a, like, a world war thing or a modern warfare. It's in, a, like, it's it's cartoony art style. Um, and it's got this just totally unique theme, which I, you know, I, I could care less about fashion in real life. I'm like, give me jeans, give me a t-shirt, give me shorts. Um give me something just dead simple and that's all I want. Um, but the game makes it work. The only thing that I really don't like about the game that I struggle with is there are a lot of areas where you got to use the grappling hook. And I do find myself having some trouble with some of those platformy grappling hook sections. And I talk a little bit about that. I show that in the video. So look forward to that video coming out here, hopefully soon for the full game but fashion police squad that was another just off the wall one coven um that is another really interesting i believe this was a cult one um i remember really really liking it um i played the demo and i really liked it um oh the other one that i was thinking of uh, was it was originally called hell hunt and then they, re- I'm trying to remember, I can't remember what they renamed it to. Um, I did a video on, it was called Hell Hunt in the early demo stages. And it the, the new demo is fairly similar, um, but I can't think of the n- updated name of it. Um, that one I'm also really looking forward to. That one played really well. I just, I can't think of what they changed the name too. I would have to find it again. Um, But yeah, we have um, Coven and Cultic. Cultic, they release basically like an episode one type of deal. And it sounds like they're going to release like future versions or like there, it'll be like a new game essentially, but it's the more content going forward. And Cultic is really interesting. Like if you want to think about like, you know, playing blood um, it's got that old, like old school kind of cult cultists that you're fighting, and it's really just really pixely '90s old school, um, and it's pretty difficult too. Um, but that is another one that I've started and I need to play through more of because I'm having a blast with what I've played so far. Ooh, God, this is another one that I just cannot wait for the full game trepang 2 there was the demo that i kept playing when riley was up here they released a new demo this year and boy was it good like the the first area was largely the same but they added like a little bit of story to it and then they added like uh, some additional arenas like you know you had these arenas where they were wave based and you would um you just fight dudes until you couldn't survive anymore. This is another one. This is not in the doom engine, but it's basically like a homage to the original fear. And Holy frick. Is it good? You have the slow motion. You have the talking soldiers. You have, um, some just, you know, acrobatic stuff. It like, I did a video for it this summer for their updated demo. And I remember playing the little, uh, like the survival mode and, Ooh, that, that outdoor level where you're 
um, I don't know. It was like, a, it was like a docks area or something, but it was, you know, it had some outdoor areas on the one part of it, but I, I, I was having such a blast with that. And even like the story mode, like I want to see what the story is going to be, but just f again, the close quarters fear combat that you have with these enemies, um, you know, they, they're, they feel like they're more alive because they, they chat with each other. They flank you. They, you know, they, they kind of have this, they fool you with their AI and, um, it, like, so you combine that with like a good shotgun, which it definitely has, or grenades, or you have, you know, you you combine that with the slow motion, and it is just a beautiful thing. Trepang 2, it's been in development forever, but I can definitely tell they're making progress, and I just want that full game already, because it's going to be good. Extranium. This is another one that I really, really enjoyed. Um, Wolfenstein 3D era style first person shooter, but you're fighting aliens uh, and zombies and things. Y you've got a few more weapons. You've got, you know, your pistol. You've got, or your, you got your shotgun. You've got a chainsaw. You've got uh, several fun little weapons. And it's, like I said, the art style, just the way it plays like a flat Wolfenstein 3D era game. I, you know, I love the presentation. It, it's just, it's a fun, simple throwback shooter. Episode one is out and he's got the first level of episode two out now. Um, I know he's going, I, I'm, you know, shout out to the developer of that because he, I know he said he's going through some stuff earlier this year and was sort of having trouble with um, getting some of the development going here, but fantastic game. And I, I really, really hope that you can get it, um, you know, that you're able to finish more of it next year because I really enjoy it. Like there are some times where I don't want anything complex. I want to cruise through a flat maze and just shoot dudes in the face. And there are secrets everywhere in this game. So it's like I said, it's kind of like a Blakestone Wolfenstein 3D era game. And I am all about it. It's really good. Um, Project, Abs Project Absinth Absinthia or Absinthia. I don't know how you say it. You play as this um, woman, like, angel thing or whatever, and you're just fighting all kinds of craziness. It reminds me of, like, again, kind of your third per or not third per first person, like, build engine type of game. But it's got this really uh, neat art style. You know, you've got this uh, female character that is always just quipping, kind of like your Duke Nukem Shadow Warrior uh, type of thing. Um, still in early access, I believe. But, um, yeah, Project Absentia, it is actually another really good one that I think plays well. And I really wish I could remember the name of that other one, that Hell Hunt game. I can't remember what they switched the name to. Um, let's see, Project Absentia, Supplice. Um, I, I don't remember the specifics of it, but I saw it in my list of videos, and I remember playing it. And I remember that it was pretty cool. There's a sub, there's a demo of it right now, so you can check. Actually, I'm not sure if it is because it might have been one of those uh, timed uh, Steam Next Fest or Realms Deep demos. But Supplies, I just remember that it was one that I'm wanting to watch. Brutal John, again, that's another one that kind of feels like a kind of a build era game. Um, I liked what I played of the demo and I'm kind of curious to see what the full game is going to be like. I don't have a whole lot else to say about it, but I did a video for it. Um, so you can check that one out. Project Warlock 2. Oh dear Lord. I loved the original Project Warlock and I backed the second game on Kickstarter. They had an early demo. They, they made a demo earlier this year or they re they released episode one and then there were like, there were these really giant levels and people were getting lost in him and he wanted to rebalance things. And then this fall, he basically, they updated the episode one um, and made them a lot, a little bit smaller levels and just made the flow a bit better. And I'm, and then they released part of, I think either part of, or all of episode two 
and I am partially through episode two. And the problem with episode two is I got to play it again because I was getting to the point where my computer was really starting to chug with everything that was going on. And I don't know if it was because I had something else running in the background or if it was just something, I don't know, that it just whatever, for whatever reason, it wasn't running well. But I mean, it was chaos, but like I am absolutely all in. Um, you know, the first Project Warlock was kind of your flat levels, kind of like your Wolfenstein 3D, but it was more monsters and you had different like levels that were themed differently. But there's a lot more uh, like verticality and just the levels are just, it plays so smoothly and it is just meaty, gory, fast, fun. Um, it just feels really good to play. So I am absolutely looking forward to Project Warlock 2. That is going to be a killer thing when it comes out. The Quake 1 remaster and then their accessibility update. So they remastered Quake, added an all-new episode. And actually, I think they might have added one ever, like, since then even. And they added, like, clearer menus, um, like a clearer menu font. And they even made it... Um, enabled by default when they release that update. So if you want to play some classic Quake on the PC, or even on, I got it on the Switch too, um, you want to play some Quake, this is definitely the way to do it because they Night Dive, or I think it was either Night Dive or New, uh, New Blood, um, they did a fantastic job with this Quake remaster. And I'm curious to see what they're, if they're going to come back and do anything with like Quake 2 or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, I had to mention that. I mean, see, you see why we're doing a, a separate episode just on first-person shooters? Like, look at all the games that I highlighted in the first video. And there's, like, just as many, like, demos and early access and full releases. There's so many first-person shooters here. It's ridiculous. And it's, and it's amazing. Animalistic. This was a neat thing. So this is... Um, early access right now and it kind of it's got a, like an anger foot vibe to it you have the melee you have the kicking you have you have all that but it's a little bit more focused on guns and it is tough it's got these just really weird like bizarre you're fighting these animal mascot things or whatever i don't know it's just got this weird dark trippy vibe going to it and it it's kind of interesting i want to see where that game goes I did a video for that earlier this year. And yeah, Animalistic is another weird one to watch out for. Oh, Blood West. Did a video for that around Halloween, and it's a game I really want to like. It's made well, but I am, for some reason, I am just terrible at it. Um, it kind of, I'm trying to think of even how to explain it. Like, it's... <sighs> It's not a roguelite, it's kind of an open world, and you're, you go on these missions, you find these little safe areas, and you get these um, missions from people, and in the early access build that's out right now, like, you know, you, you find this little, like, ghost town, and there's all these weird enemies, and you, you have to clear out this church or this chapel thing or whatever, there's some caves that you got to clear out. And for some reason, like I said, it is just really tough. Um, you, It's a lot more of a methodical type of game. You know, you're not just going to be running and gunning because you will just get annihilated. Um, it's... You, gotta, you really got to focus on sneaking a bit more. And, you know, really place your shots. And, like, if you die, you lose resources and enemies will respawn. And like I said, it's a really neat game. You'll have to check out the video where I talk about it more. But, like I said, there's a lot here to like. And your, I love your main character. Um, the, the voice actor for it, I remember earlier this year, he did, like, a little playthrough of part of the demo. And he actually added his own additional narration to what was in the game. And it was just the coolest thing. I would watch an entire playthrough of that game from him because it's just, he does this just, um, you know, really kind of gruff wild west, uh, hmm, thinking about doing this. <clears throat> type of thing. 
and um, it was just really, really neat, and I would love to see a full thing of that, but uh, yeah, it's a game that I really want to like. Maybe the full version will have a little bit of either assists or difficulty modes or something to help with the people like myself who just suck at the game, who otherwise love it. Proteus got a full release this year, and boy, Proteus is another, like, you know, you love the Doom, the original Doom games. Um, it's really good. And not only do you have the campaign, but you have, it's got a level editor. You can play other people's levels. I mean, it play, I mean, it is, again, it's another just super nice, fast paced, great playing, bloodier than hell. Like you just, you come up with some, you come up to someone with a shotgun, and you just, and they are pulped, man. I mean, it, it's just a fun game, really good looking. Uh, old school retro shooter that I absolutely love. Um, and then the last one that I have listed here, and I'm thinking it's more of a retro. Sh well, I don't know if it's going to be a retro shooter, but I threw it in here because it seemed like a good a place as any to put it. Um, High on life. It is not out yet as I'm recording this, because like I said, I'm recording this a week or two ahead of time, just so I make sure that I have these videos done for the end of the year. Um, this is that one I mentioned in another video where it's like the guy who does the, uh, Rick and Morty, um, you have these, there's multiple guns, I guess, and they, they, each one of them, they're, I don't know, they're sentient or something because they're, they're talking guns. And like the one that they mainly have showed so far is, I believe his name is Justin Roiland. He's the guy who does the Rick and Morty voices. Um, it's going to be on Game Pass, so I'm going to try that out on my Series S when it comes out. And, I, you know, if I like it, I might pick it up on PC when I get my new rig. Um, but, yeah, uh, High on Life, kind of curious about it. I'm sure that I missed a few. Um, I know that I did, and I still, it, that one game is still bugging the crap out of me. I can't remember what they, they, they turned Hell Hunt into. Um, I, I, I can see the game. I can see it in my head. I can hear it. I just can't think of what they renamed it to. Uh, it's on my Steam wish list. I know that. And I've played the demo. It's really good. Um, but while we're talking about retro first-person shooters here, I do, of course, have to mention the Toby Accessibility Mod. I will mention it in tomorrow's video, too, for accessibility. Um, but I want to mention it here too, just because the Toby accessibility mod for doom. I mean, come on, the, literally, I think I'm recording this day or two after doom's 29th birthday. I really, really hope it and Bethesda do something amazing for the, their 30th next year. Please make it happen. Just do something really awesome to commemorate 30 years of like gaming perfection. Um, but, you know, people talk about making games accessibility or game accessibility after the fact. It can be done. I mean, yeah, it's a modder. But he made it happen. Shout out, huge shout out to Mr. Alan D1, my man, for making Doom accessible. And I said, I can't help but think every time I think of it, I'm like, man, Riley, you picked a weird time to get out of game accessibility and to move away because <laughs> uh, I don't know if I don't know if she's still doing the game accessibility thing, but um, um, there's so many cool things happening and so many games becoming more accessible, and I'm just so glad that Doom is uh, being one of them because it's a game I've enjoyed ever since it originally came out. Um, and I'm going to mention these in other videos too, but I'm, since we're looking at near the end of Turtles in Time here, um, we're not going to play through this whole game, but you've seen me play through the whole thing here before, so just go check out one of those streams and you'll see it. But, um, you know, when you're talking about retro first-person shooters, we've had E1M1 Magazine. We've had Reload Magazine, which spun off from that because of some stuff that happened with E1M1. And the Reload Magazine guys are just so great. Like, I, you know, I, I talk with them on Twitter sometimes. And, you know, we and 
the even better thing is earlier this year, I got an article, a feature article in their um, their sampler issue of E1M or, or, or of Reload Magazine. I don't have the physical copy yet, but like I had to when I backed it on Kickstarter, <clears throat> just because I knew that I was going to have an article in it. I had to get a physical copy because I had to see it in the paper form. Um, so much looking forward to seeing that. I already have the digital version, and I've read I I've read the magazine, and like I did a short little video on it, just showing it. I'm just I'm I'm really proud of that accomplishment this year. Really cool. And then I I just recently picked up and did a video for that. I'm too young to die history of first person shooters from 1992 to 2002 that is a book that i'm really needing to finish here in the very very new near future i've got the pdf version and i've got this ginormous coffee table book here sitting on my tv train next to me um super well done and i'm all about that and hopefully next year we are going to get the uh f i hope it comes out next year I backed it on Kickstarter, the FPS documentary. Uh, this this company that made um, like the In Search of Darkness and uh, oh, what do they call it? Um, in not In Search of um, the the In Search of Darkness one and two, and then they had the, the what do they call the future one? Like the eight, the basically it was like eighties sci fi, and it was really good. In Search of Tomorrow, that's what it was. Um, but and then they got David Craddock in, in, involved with the first person shooter, the FPS documentary. I've seen a few clips on that, and I believe literally they're having an uh, AMA today, a little Zoom uh, Ask Me Anything stream. And I'm going to try to remember to attend that today because I am, like I said, like look at all the stuff that's here. We've got old shooters, we've got remastered shooters, we've got new retro shooters. We've got documentaries, we've got um, books, we've got um, John Romero is going to have a book coming out next year. It was supposed to come out this December, but it got delayed. Bummer. But my man John Romero, um, co-creator of Doom and Wolfenstein and Quake and mm, just, I really want to read his book. So, I mean, there's just so much happening in this area. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, that is why I have a total, a, a separate video just dedicated to retro first-person shooters, because there is enough content to talk about today uh, for this topic. But that is basically what I've got for it, so we're going to wrap this video up here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a like if you did. Follow me on Twitter at bgfh79 twitch.tv slash illegally cited illegally cited.com and right here on youtube so until next time i will chat with everyone again later in day three